Hey, it's Scott Garlis at Stansberry Research. I'm here at the 2019 Alliance Conference in Las Vegas. I'm with Mark Cojodes, uh, former managing partner of Copper River Management. Mark. Thanks for having me, Scott. Great chatting with you. Thanks for your time. Um, so a couple of questions here for you. The first one, what's more rewarding, exposing fraudulent companies or the payoff when a short goes your way? Exposing the fraud and the evildoers getting what they deserve is the most rewarding. I, like I mean, it. money, plenty of money is made and lost. I've made a lot, I've lost a lot, but seeing some of these guys brought to justice is, is very important. And hopefully it gives some of the folks who want to engage in wrongdoing a lesson of what can happen to them if things go bad. But the problem now in the current environment is there's been very little prosecution of wrongdoers and what I would call criminals have been able to run with it for way longer than they should. Maybe deregulation is going the wrong way to an extent. Well, I always said that I think deregulation is really good and I think less regulation is really good. I think that's positive. But what rules and regulations you have, you better enforce. It's kind of like in football when Brady was complaining about all the stupid penalties. Penalties are stupid, that's right, but when you commit one and it's flagrant, you need to be punished for it and punished for it severely. And that's the problem right now is the SEC and the DOJ is so defanged that these guys think they can get away with anything and so far they have. So until that changes, it's, it's a tough sled for getting after some of these guys. Very fair. Next question, it's regarding your uh, my medic short, was the story for you about fraudulent accounting, financial practices, or was it about the products themselves? That's a good question. I mean, I've said that pound for pound, my medics is the greatest short and the biggest fraud I've ever seen. It has a little bit of everything to it. It's the accounting. <clears throat> it's the way they treat people, the way they treat their customers, the VA, Medicare, Medicaid, individuals. The claims about their products are false. Uh, the injectable product not only doesn't work, it's dangerous. Um, doctors are paid off, kickbacks, uh, bribes. So it has a little bit of everything. But the base product, this thing called Epifix, is no different than a Band-Aid, and there's 80 people who do it, so they're not special in that. The injectable that they sell, which was the so-called growth, that product A doesn't work, B doesn't test properly, C they've bribed the clinicians who've tested the product, and it's just downright dangerous. And they've admitted to lying to the FDA, as the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg's reported, and they're still at it. I mean, they're still in business, I, hopefully not for long, but... It's hard to believe. Well, it's hard to believe, but at the same time, until people decide to act, folks get away with it. And the longer it goes, the longer people think they're going to get away with it. But hopefully, I think between now and your end, something, something comes which changes people's mindset a little bit. Good. But, but we'll see. Yeah. You're mostly known for shorting stocks. How often do you go long? Rarely. My longs aren't too good. Um, I'm jittery on, I can sleep well being short something. I have problems sleeping when I'm long something. And the market is too uh, jumpy to me. And I think being long something is relatively easy. And some, for some reason, I don't want an easy lifestyle or life path. So it's no, that, no fun, right? No. I mean, well, why the hell would you want to run across a freeway during rush hour when you can just drive the car? So, yeah, I mean, my focus is mainly on the shorts, and occasionally I can find a long that I think has some, some excitement. It just, it's amazing, too, the misperception in the marketplace that shorts are evil. Right. And they're, they're really actually ferreting out things that are going wrong like you're doing. Well, yeah, and some, to get them some, correct. well, there's there's evil in all walks of life and in all practices, and some shorts may be evil. But the amount of time and energy I spend getting after some of this stuff is, you know, I don't sort of wish it on anyone except the people who are born with the short gene because uh, the road is very difficult and, and, and hard. Yeah. 
So I try to do my part and expose some of these guys and speak out against folks who I think are doing things wrong. And then the last question I had for you, uh, is short selling a strategy retail investors should consider implementing in their portfolios? Probably not. Um, probably not because it's dangerous, it's hard. If you're gonna do it, I think you need to understand what you're in, why you're in, and understand that it's very risky. You can have a point of view on certain companies, and if you're sophisticated and can do the research and understand why you're in it, what you're looking for, what your risks are, it's something you can consider then. But just as a broad brush strategy, I, I tend to probably advise against it. Unless, unless you really, if you're, you know, the more I think your question, if you're a doctor and know certain things in your line of work, or you know something's a hoax, I think you can take a shot. If you're in the retail business and you know the demographics for mall jewelry is weak, I think you can take a shot. But just as a broad brush thing, when you read something or you see something, I think you need to do work and get comfort behind it because it can be very uh, treacherous, especially in this tweeting, trade war, untrade war, trade truce, non-truce world where things can get very dramatic very fast. Yes. So. Great words. Well, anyway, thanks for having me. Thanks for your time. A lot of fun. Certainly. Yeah. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more updates.